After one very long week of waiting, I am finally back with episode three of the Crazy Craft Challenge. Yippee yay! <laughs> The Crazy Craft Challenge is a collaboration with Pam at The Paper Outpost and we've put our heads together to find some crazy things that we can do during this challenge. So if you have missed perhaps episode two and one, please check out the info box. There's a playlist with every video that's available for this cool challenge. And I've also put your videos into this playlist because there are many people in the meantime who have joined this challenge also on YouTube, not only on other social medias. I mean, <laughs> that's the same worth. I mean, if you have posted something on Instagram, that's the same worth as when you make a video, of course. But if you want to watch a video that's not from me or from Pam, then please check out this playlist. There are many other YouTube channels who have joined in the meantime, and I'm more than happy about that. Thank you so much to everyone out there who went a little bit crazy with this challenge. And yeah, thank you so much for all of your feedback about this challenge. I'm a little bit overwhelmed about that, I have to say. But yeah, it's fun. And I think we have to do something else today. So this is, as I said, episode three. And as you can see, I have prepared some things for today because today we are making a collage that's made out of things that are starting with the first letter of our name. So it's some kind of the first letter of our name collage. Strange title, I know. <laughs> but I think this is going to be something that brings you a little bit out of the box. I have already experienced that, even if I haven't started yet. And that's a thing I think this is the cool thing about challenges. I mean, if you have your things on your desk and you want to start, then you think, okay, what can I do? And perhaps you are doing the same thing as you did yesterday and the day before yesterday and every time. But when you have a challenge and you have some rules, then I think you can think out of the box and come to really new ideas. So, um, my name is Louise, as you know, so I have to choose words that are starting with the letter L. So I have to choose five things. I have them, uh, I have stamped them down here to these little scraps. I will tell you in a second which words I have used. And additionally, I can use some um, stamps or some stickers or whatever I'm inspired to use. If there are words that are starting with the first letter of your name that you don't have physically, then you can, of course, draw them or paint them, stamp them, write them down or sketch them or whatever so that you have the piece that you can take to put it into your collage. So the five words that I have chosen are ledger, ledger paper, and for this word i want to use some of this heavy material here <laughs> i to be honest don't know exactly what this is but my father gave this to me and in here are tons of interesting papers um i think for other people that could be some kind of trash it's really old but this is so cool so many different um handwritings and that stuff and this is, I would say, not such a um, typical ledger paper. I mean, you know those books, those ledger books, um, with these blue and red lines and that stuff. This is a little bit different, and that's the reason why I want to use some of this stuff. Then I have the word label, and for that I took out my little container here with all my labels. I have some really normal ones. I have some that have some numbers or some interesting stuff on them. Um, I am not totally sure if I want to use these 
um, exactly as they are or if I want to make something different because there's something in my head that I want to try and perhaps I will not use those but make a label by myself. But I want to put those here to my desk so that I can see them and have the possibility perhaps to use some of those. Then I have the word lawn. I really love this word <laughs> because, yeah, one of my very favorite songs has this word in it, but in a totally different way. I can't talk about that now, but <laughs> no, Louisa, don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. This is a craft video. <laughs> then, uh, oh, lawn. I want to uh, put a lawn to my page um, by using Pam's digital printable. So this is this one here. Um, I really like these yellow flowers. I have shown you this printable in the first episode of this crazy craft challenge. I will link this item down below for you. There are many pages in really different colors in this set and I think she did a really amazing job to digitalize those. As you can see the colors are really versatile because they are so different. I also have some of the scraps from the first episode of this challenge here on my desk and I'm absolutely in love with these colors. It's so gorgeous. This paper is absolutely gorgeous and I'm planning to use um, some of these rectangled pieces for my background of this collage and this uh, sheet I want to use to fuzzy cut some of those yellow flowers. Then I have the next word, it's lady. And I thought long about that because lady is um, a word that's perhaps in English a little bit different than in German or in German mm, I mean you can um, translate this word in German of course but we are also using the word lady in German as it is lady and um, it's sometimes used in a really kind and nearly cozy really heartwarming way and sometimes it's used in a bit, I would say, bitchy way, <laughs> if that is a word. To get a lady to my collage, I want to use some of these relatively new printables from my own shop. These are some vintage people to fuzzy cut. I think this lady here, it's not a typical lady. Do you know what I mean? This is not a typical lady, but for my um understanding this can be a lady as well if you put her to the right background and to the right context um yeah so here are some of those images that would work for me today this one here would work as well really really well or even this little lady here because she has this um flower bouquet this this basket with the flowers in it um and i'm really not sure if i can choose one of those <laughs> so this would be a typical lady i know um but yeah she would fit perhaps but i think i will not use her but let's see so um i will of course list this item down below for you as well this lady would also work i think here are some um of the pictures that would work definitely um here we have another one she has a dog with her she would work as well of course as a typical lady but yeah let's see until now, uh, to be honest, I don't know what will happen here. And the last word that's starting with the first letter of my name is language. And this is a word that I wanted to have in this challenge because, you know, I'm trying to make my videos um, on this channel in German and in English. And especially the English language is really hard for me Um I want to thank everyone out there who said that I improved my vocabulary and yeah, my speaking 
it's so heartwarming for me that you say that I'm trying to learn every day some new words by watching other English speaking YouTubers and trying to, yeah, get this crafty language to my brain. <laughs> And you are always so helpful. And when I'm struggling with the words, you are trying to help me in the comments. And that's so, so cool. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. And that's the reason why I want to use this word. Because the word language is so meaningful for me. And I have thought about how can I use the word language. I mean, I could say I take all of my five strips here, my little scraps, and include them into my collage, then I have a language, the English language, in my collage. But that was too easy for me. <laughs> I think I want to use these words in some way for the background collage, perhaps, but I want to have something that represents this word language. And when I prepared my desk to film this video, I had this on my desk. This is a braille paper and I just wanted to take it out of the way and bring it to my shelf where it belongs in its little box. Then I thought, wait, Louise, this is the perfect material to represent the word language. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm a little bit proud and that's what I wanted to say in the beginning. This idea of taking this paper for representing the word language took me out of the box before I started. And that's so great about this challenge. Okay, so let's start. And I first want to choose a page where I can put this collage to. I mean... Um, these pages are really tall. I tried that out for the first time to make such tall pages. It's some kind like uh, some kind of a giant traveler's notebook, and I'm really enjoying um, having these big pages here. But it's always so hard to choose one. So what about this one? This is, I mean, I'm also searching for a page that's relatively sturdy. This is already um, prepared with some gesso and acrylic paint so that it's waterproof and I think it's thick enough to do this collage. Yeah, okay, so let's try to take this page. Um, I'm just thinking if I want to put another coat of gesso here to this page to protect it totally from water. So today I want to try something that I have often seen. Do I want to cut that or tear it? I think I want to tear it. Sorry. Um, I want to try something that I have often seen on Pinterest and also in some YouTube videos from other creators. Um, I want to try to make a layered collage. I mean, every collage is layered, isn't it? What am I talking here? Uh, it's so hard for me to explain. Um, the first layer that I want to put down here shall be really, really, really in the background. Um, the next layer shall be a little bit more visible and the next more visible and so on until I have the full visible image on the um, very top layer. I don't know if that makes sense until now, but I will tell you in a second how I want to do that. Um, for the background collage that will be a little bit invisible later, I'm um, just tearing Pam's printables like this. Um, I'm doing that exactly where the image says me that I shall do it. I mean, here's this little line, as you can see, and I'm tearing exactly here so that I have this little image. Then I'm tearing here and here and here and so on. That way, I'm hopefully getting rectangled um, collage pieces that are all different sizes and look really interesting. I Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to put my first layer of, of these scraps here um, to my background. I'm gluing this whole stuff here with some gel medium. 
it's Liquitex a matte gale um, I'm I will link that down below for you in the description box if you are interested in having that you can find that in my Amazon storefront I like to use this for collaging because as you perhaps can see this lays down totally flat now I can go over this uh, image with my paintbrush and I get it sealed at the same time where I'm gluing it and I really like that um, to have this possibility that's really cool Okay, so when this is totally dry, we have this a little bit weird collage here. And now I have to be really, really brave. And you perhaps too when you watch this. So I want to mute this down now. I mean, this looks really gorgeous. Perhaps I should take a photo before I, I'm doing the next step. But let's try something. The other day I have talked with my friend Kerstin. Hi, Kerstin. Perhaps you're watching this. Um, and we are planning a really, really huge thing together. And while we have um, talked about that, she said to me um, how she is getting her pages and her papers really grungy and old and brown, especially brown. She has um, used some um, transparent glue. I don't have transparent glue here, so I'm trying to use this matte medium again. And she has to mis mix that with some really crazy ingredients. So I have put some um, gel medium into this little thing. And then I'm adding some instant coffee. Yes, you've heard right. <laughs> Where's my spoon? some instant coffee i don't know how much how much do i have to put in there um let's first do one spoon and then some water and some vanilla flavor and by accident <laughs> happy accident i have this vanilla extract here so whew, let me put a tiny bit of this in here I think that gives it another cool dimension of this brownish color and then I'm mixing that up and hopefully my gel medium will now become one with this water uh, coffee mix I'm so hoping that that it gets one perhaps I should put the thing on top and then shake it I think that would be better. Uh oh. Looks really strange. I think it would be better to use normal glue. Perhaps this PVA glue could work as well. But I haven't thought about that uh, before, to be honest. But let's see. I think that has already a really cool color. I have not expected that. But perhaps it's because it's a little bit creamy now because of the shaking. It reminds me to this Italian coffee cream that they put onto their um, coffee. I mean, what we would call espresso. They put this coffee cream on top. Looks really similar. <laughs> and I really don't know if that is already brown enough. And if it's, especially if it's um, covering this. So I think we will try that out by putting a little bit of this 
a interesting looking thing <laughs> to one of the leftover strips that I have here to see how dark this is. Oh yes. Okay. That's really brown. I really like the color, but it's not covering the image enough for my plans. I think this would be a really cool mixture to um, to make some pages a little bit more um, vintage and to make them brown. Look at this. This is a really, really cool color. I'm just trying that out here so that I can later on remember the, uh, the color and that I can see how it will um, dry when it's only those ingredients that I have put into my glass until now. Okay, so let's check that later. And um, to mute this down, I need something else. And I think I will put some white gesso into this thing now. How much? Okay, so that is an amazing color. This is a really, really amazing color, and I think I will leave it exactly like it is. Let's try that out. Let's try to bring that to the background. It's really liquid, and perhaps we will need two or three coats of this to get the right um, amount. Okay, so this is nearly dry now. Um, here are some little areas that are not dry, but I um, have decided that I want to put some white gesso on top of this now to bring the shapes of my paper scraps out a little bit more. I don't know if that will work, but I want to try that. And with this little wet areas, I'm hoping that I get this not totally white. I mean, I have put this on top because I don't want to put white gesso here. So, of course, I have to do something now that brings me uh, more interest, more definition of those little pieces here. But I don't want to have it totally white. Oh my goodness. Let's try it. So I'm trying to rub my gesso really gently um, to the edges of those scraps. And now perhaps we have to think about this a little bit. Perhaps those in the background, I mean this first layer, should be a little bit more brown and these on top should be perhaps a little bit more white. Perhaps that gives us a little bit more interest. Okay, so um, it seems that the this coffee um, glue mixture is soaking into my white gesso. I think that looks really cool, but it's not um, popping out enough for me. These little single like bricks are not coming out enough for me. So. I think we have two things to do now. First of all, um, we have to take out our 
texture paste opaque crackle Whew. much courage and then i will let's start here i will apply that here trying to get it relatively thin because later on i want to um, collage my other things on top of course and it seems to mix up with the stuff underneath but i think it will turn out relatively white okay so <laughs> Put some time for drying and some effort into your backgrounds and you will get something like a prize. Look at this cool crackling effect. This is not totally white, I know, but this looks so cool. It's nearly white. No, it's a little bit brown. <laughs> it's not nearly white, Louisa. <laughs> but I'm so in love with this. This looks like a... Yeah, wall of bricks now and these things here are really in the background even if they are so clear visible I mean the flowers I can see the flowers that they are flowers and um, that's not what I've planned by the way but this is totally awesome but um, I guess we should now uh, take something like a crayon and go around these little bricks here. So I have this Faber-Castell gelato crayon here. It's a water-soluble um, oil pastel crayon. And now I'm trying to get this really close whoo, to the edge of this thing. Okay, so let's first um, take a finger with water only a tiny little, little bit and then go over this and smear that around a little bit that looks not so bad if it's a little bit on top of this crackle paste okay so let's go with that that looks cool shall we go around this whole thing or only in some areas ah oh, i can't decide that I mean, okay, so we have to choose, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry that this is so confusing and so not organized and not planned, but I can't plan that. Um, that's a strange thing because now I I don't know from where the light is coming. I don't know how to shade it, that I want to shade it, but I have to know which of my um, ladies here I want to use to see where's the light in that photo so um that i can decide where to shade um the rest of the collage otherwise that would look really really strange okay so that means um, in this picture the light is coming from here the picture is dark here at her um, skirt and it's dark here so that means i think my shading here is exactly in the right uh position um, when the light comes from here, all the bricks would be light here on top and on the left side. So that means I will go on and <clears throat> make this brown shadow around the other ones, all on the right side and on the bottom. And for that I'm just scribbling around a little bit here to the edge and then I will smear it with my finger and a tiny little bit of water.
Uh, this. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so happy about that. Okay, so um, what is the task of today? I mean, what is the challenge? <laughs> the challenge is um, lawn. We have the lawn. We have the lawn in the background. So, okay. Uh, we need language, label, ledger, and the lady is here. Okay, so um originally and i think i can't go with this plan now originally i thought i want to make a frame around her that is in the shape of a label i mean a really oversized label um and that she is um, sitting in this frame but i think if i do that i will cover up really much of my background and I'm not sure if I want to do that I'm really not sure I mean we could go the very easy way and just take some labels and put them here as a part of our collage I mean why not we could just put one label there and the cheese is eaten we would say that in English uh, in German <laughs> sorry that looks not so not so bad um if we would just put some of those i mean i don't know if these are the right ones but we could just put some of those labels somewhere here behind her and we would have done our job i would say <sighs> but i don't know if that's what i want i would like to try something I would like to try something okay so I need a piece of paper that is approximately I mean the hole in the label has to be she has to sit on it so her skirt and um, her feet can come out of this so that I can make it as tiny as I as it is possible so um, the inside of this thing has to be nine centimeters high I have to write that down somewhere nine and the width is approximately seven okay so uh, I will just go away drink a coffee prepare something and then I will uh, come back I can't do that here on my table because I have to go to my cutting machine and to another place where I can't film but I will be back in a second okay so here we go I've just cut this little frame here out of a piece of cardstock the plan is <clears throat> to put her into this frame approximately like this but now um, the frame looks a little bit strange because it's brown and it has nothing on it. But I think we could put some of our ledger paper here on top. Right. And now I'm thinking if I put that here directly on top, this will get too dark because this um, paper is uh, lets this shine through so I will first cover this up with some white gesso to give it a white coat and then put the other paper on top and I think that will be exactly the right color that we need here Then I thought if she is later on 
here. Um, we have to put something to this frame, to the background of the frame, to the background of her, um, because otherwise our background from around is peeking out here and I think that looks strange. If you have a picture on a wall that is framed, then you wouldn't see the wall <laughs> as well. So what about taking a piece of this braille paper and put that um, behind her? No. No, no. Louisa, you can't glue that now. You can't glue that now. You have to do something else first. First, you have to decide where you want to put your flowers and if you perhaps want to put some flowers in between of this braille paper and the frame to make that look a little bit more dimensional. So I think I want to do it exactly like it is here now, <laughs> I think. <laughs> this goes a little bit to the right so that I can start gluing this. And I think this will be um, the hardest part of this challenge because I need exactly the this position now that I have here. And I think that's not so easy to glue that, but let's see. Note to myself, <laughs> flowers that are not glued look better than flowers that are glued. Um, I've tried to glue those flowers in a way that my friend Sonja, she's known as Elise Klatschmoon on Instagram, has shown me. Um, she is gluing her flowers always a little bit crumbled up and I've tried to do that here as well as you can see so that the flowers that are on top of this collage are a little bit more dimensional. These in the background I have glued completely flat this one and this one and this here I've crumbled it a little bit where the frame of this uh, thing is and these I've crumbled up nearly totally. I'm not so unhappy with the outcome of this crumbling. I like this dimension, but something is looking weird here. And I think it took me an hour or even longer to realize what it is. And it's because everything is shaded um, in the right way. I mean, again, the light is coming from here. Everything is shaded here and here, but the flowers not. And I think that's the reason why this whole thing, for me, looks a little bit strange. So now <laughs> I'm trying to find a way to shade those flowers. So <clears throat> what I want to try is I want to take my crayon here and I will just take a pellet and scribble some of the crayon down here so that I don't get any water to my crayon. I don't like that. I know some people put the um, wet brush directly to the tip of the crayon, but I don't like that. I don't want to have water coming into this little container where the crayon is in. 
um, instead of doing that I'm just putting a little bit of water here to this so that I get the same brown color like I've used before for the other shading and now I'm trying to get the shadow to the right place perhaps this brush is a little bit thick let's see if that is possible okay so this will turn out a little bit different than this one here because in this color here now is a lot of water of course um, and it will turn out probably a little bit different but I want to have this shading here I have the feeling that it makes this whole thing complete okay so here we go I think that's much better definitely much better than before Um yeah can I be happy with that or shall we perhaps spritz something here and there <laughs> I think the dress of her here is really white the braille paper in the background is really really white and I think it needs some more detailed stuff around the flowers um, and we can use white for that in the very end but um, first of all, I want to use this strange mixture that I've made um, and try to splatter here and there because here, for example, I don't know if you can see that that's so tiny, I got a little splatter of this thing here to my page and I really, really like that. Um, so I'm trying to get some of that here to my arrangement. Um, the flow of the flowers is going like this so this is the direction I think this splattering has to go as well so let's try that really carefully and let's try to first get some of that here I think you can't see anything because it's so light but it's visible Okay, so let's try to get some white here and there. Where do I have to put it? Um, something here, definitely. And then I will go over the flowers here. And over her skirt a little bit so that here's a little bit more on the bottom than on the top this way I think the page also gets something like a bottom you can feel that it's more weight on the bottom of the page than on the top and I think that's not so bad it's, today it's again spritzing everywhere and not to my page Ugh. but I think I like that and I think I will leave it like it is so I will show you a close-up I'm trying to show you a close-up and I will let those drops air dry now because I think there's a difference between letting those white drops air dry and um, drying them with your heat gun um, I don't know if everyone can see the difference, but I can see it, and that's what matters. <laughs> you can see um, some detailed pictures of the finished page um, on my Instagram if you want. Of course, you can follow me there if you like. Um, my Instagram is at Luisa Heinzel. You can also find that somewhere here um, in the video. Oh my gosh, where, where's my finger? <laughs> I have some problems uh, here on the right bottom somewhere there's uh, my Instagram and it's also linked down below in the description box if you want to follow me there I would be really happy if we see there again um, and since we have language here I have chosen a quote for my um, spread here that's German um, so I thought that could be a nice addition to this English video to choose a quote in another language. This says, es muss von Herzen kommen. And that means something like, it needs to come from the heart. And I think that fits really, really well to this spread. 
and the closer I look, the more I like it. <laughs> Okay, so if you want to know what Pam at the Paper Outpost has done with this challenge, creating this collage, then please check out her channel. The link is down below in the description box and there's also the direct link to her video of today. Okay, so that was episode three of the Crazy Craft Challenge. And to be honest, and I have not talked with Pam about that, I'm hoping that this crazy craft challenge is not finished forever. So these three epi episodes were the first three episodes of this crazy craft challenge. And I'm so hoping that we perhaps can come up with some more ideas. So Pam, if you're watching this, this is a really, really warm invitation to do this fun thing with me in the future again someday perhaps um so perhaps you have some more crazy ideas or perhaps i have some in my mind already so i would be really really happy if we can do this again one day um yeah <laughs> i thought i say that in the video so that you <laughs> have no other chance no i'm just kidding um I, it was a really, really big honor for me that you have done that with me, Pam. So thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. I think I've said that several times, but it's so crazy for me. And it's it was such a huge experience. I could learn so much, not only from you, Pam, but also from all the others that have participated in this challenge. There came up so many YouTube videos um, from other YouTubers that have made um, some something by her by their self oh my goodness i can't speak um there were so many youtube videos uh with this hashtag and there i think are coming a lot more because the people are enjoying this idea and this is so cool i mean this junk channel community is so great because you are throwing a crazy idea to youtube or to the social media and then the people are joining and that's for me something that is incredibly awesome because yeah you know you all have things to do and you all have your stuff on your desk and you sit down and say this is a is a cool thing and we are joining and i want to thank everyone who has joined this challenge as well it was such a great experience and i'm so happy that i have you all in my community thank you so very much for being here with me every time and <sighs> I'm so appreciating that you are here. I, ca I can't tell you. It's always so hard for me to tell that in English because of my vocabulary, you know. But please be sure that I love you all. I'm so happy that I can do this here with you and for you. And I'm hoping we are seeing the next time. So thank you very much for watching. And yeah, make a collage now. Bye-bye. <laughs>